Hello, everyone. I'll continue today talking a little bit about Swami Kriyananda's sense of humor, which I found irresistible and so very, very charming. Last time I talked about his love for P.G. Woodhouse, and who was a great English humorist. And in later years, as recording talks and so on became more normal and easier to do, many of Swami Kriyananda's Woodhouse readings were taped. And some of the people who would listen to these tapes afterwards were just, they would become great fans of Swami because his, his different voices that he would use to convey the different characters, so you could always tell who was talking. Even if, if you weren't actually reading it yourself, you could, you could figure it all out because Swami was so good at portraying each individual character in a recognizable way so that it was easy to follow. I remember one fan wrote to Swami and said, look, I don't care if you are in your 70s now, even if you're getting old and feeble, just get somebody to prop you up in a corner and shove a microphone in your face and keep recording these (laughs) stories because they're so wonderful. And Swami just loved that, that somebody would say that. And he remembered that for years and always would refer to, well, just prop me up in a corner and shove a microphone in my face. He was very self-deprecating and just enjoyed humor when it came from any source. He had a marvelous sense of humor. Um, I worked a lot with his music through the years, and I think I started singing pretty much right after I came to Ananda. I definitely started chanting right away. And then... I started working with Swami's music, joined a small group, was part of the choir when it happened, and which was pretty much after the oratorio was written, which was around 1984, maybe, something like that, maybe 83, I'm not sure. But at any rate, I did a lot of uh, concerts planning them, getting everything rehearsed, uh, and creating different vignettes around Swami's music. So, for example, he wrote a, a humorous song about Hawaii. He had visited there several times and had looked at how to speak Hawaiian a little bit. I think he had a book or something. But then he decided to just write a song, and he just made up the words to make them sound Hawaiian, even though they weren't. And it was very, very cute. It was um, about a, a man who takes a canoe and goes out rowing and finally gets to another island and falls in love and and the beautiful maiden finally accepts him and and they go off in the canoe or something like that i forget the little story but it it was very innocent and sweet and and so we made a little skit out of it and another one was um the first song that Swami ever wrote was It's Time to Go to School. 
And he was five or six years old when he wrote this song. And he wrote it because he had a dream in which there were three little ducks dressed up in sailor suits and they were singing this song to him. It's time to go to school. And so we made a little skit out of that. We had people dressed in sailor suits as ducks in sailor suits. And we did a little dance and, and sang the song. And Swami loved that. In fact, he was always so kind and supportive of everything that we did with the music in those days. I remember once we had telephones, um, he would call me after I got home after the, the concert and again tell me how much he enjoyed everything. He inevitably would say that to me in person, come up to me afterwards and thank me and rave about how wonderful everybody had been and just very, very supportive of all the work it, that went into the music. And he enjoyed the humor. That was a big part of it. Just enjoying having people laugh and be in that lightness of spirit. There was a time when um, I was going through a very difficult time and he talked to a friend of mine about me and what was, they both knew what was going on. And he said, she'll be all right. She has a sense of humor. And I've never forgotten that because, and my friend told me, of course, um, and I think it's very good advice. We have to be able to laugh at ourselves and not take what happens to us too seriously. Of course we need to take in the lessons that God and the universe is trying to teach us through the experiences of our lives, but we need to keep always in our hearts that sense of this is just a dream. It may not be ducks and sailor suits, but it's just a dream all the same. And the more we can keep our equilibrium and our sense of humor and our sense of perspective on life, that it's very short, that we're here to love God and to realize Him, that's our only job, then everything is all right. As the great woman saint Ananda Moy Ma said, whatever happens, it's all right. So let that be written in your heart and view everything that happens with that sense of joy keeping your sense of humor.